is the main point I want to pin home here to end the podcast, is that Jalen Brown's in his third year. Jason Tatum's in his second year. We saw this team get to the Eastern Conference Finals of Game 7 last season. Now they're losing into the second round with Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving. So what went wrong? And we wanted to see growth in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and we didn't see it. And in fact, we almost saw a decrease in production during the season in the playoffs. And people gave Jason Tatum specifically a lot of hype because he had a great playoff series last year. But I've been railing on the guy all season long and how he takes too many shots, he dribbles the ball too much, he holds on to the ball, it's reluctant passing. He may, he may make the pass, but he doesn't do it in first instinct. And to me, that was the problem with his team all season long. And I talked about how Kendrick Perkins was on Adam Kaufman's podcast, the Celtics Beat podcast for CLNS Media. And one of the things Perk talked about how they made reluctant passes. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of guys taking turns. If their shot isn't there, they might pass it, but that's not their first thought. Their first thought is to get mine. And last season, they played with great chemistry. They didn't have Gordon Hayward. Kyrie, Kyrie Irving got hurt. Young guys were just establishing themselves, so they didn't have the ego. They didn't need the shots. They were just playing well, and they're talented players, and they were playing together. Terry Rozier is very confident, as I said, but this season with a limited role. And now he's talking about his limited role, but he played terribly. Probably the worst on the team. When I look at what went wrong with this basketball team, it's the team became less efficient to come down to it. All those player efficiency numbers went way down. And when you put that all together, that means you're a less efficient basketball team. And when you, when you try to figure out what efficiency means, it's playing together. It's making the most of your opportunities. It's taking good shots. Taking advantage of your minutes. Playing together. Teams that are efficient play together. Move the ball. Make the extra pass. And all season long, this team wasn't efficient. They weren't making the extra pass. And you saw in the playoffs. And when I look at who's to blame, number one, you got to go with Kyrie Irving. That is 100% the first side to blame. He wanted the spotlight in the playoffs. People have talked about it all the time. He didn't show up. He shot horribly. He became basically an average player based on efficiency. He missed tons of shots. He kept shooting. He was 8 for 22, 7 for 22. Horrible shooting percentages against the Bucks. They needed this guy to step up, and he didn't. Even before Brad Stevens, I give it to the young guys. Terry Rozier was just on Get Up. He was just on ESPN First Take talking about how challenging it was that he had to deal with this limited role. Suck it up. Play in the limited minutes. Be efficient. Take advantage of your opportunity. You're not going to be a starter. You're not even that good, Rozier. You did well in a certain amount of time. Plenty of guys do well in a certain amount of time. He's not a starter in this league. I'm sorry. He's not. He could be a good bench player if he has his role. I am so down on Rozier right now. And you hear this guy talk about how he sacrificed so much for the team. To me, drives me nuts because he was terrible. Probably the worst on the team, as I said. So you need to learn how to play with better players and learn to play within your role. Yes, I give Irving criticism for how he treated his teammates, how he affected team chemistry, how he was ball dominant and didn't show up in the playoffs. Then I put the blame on Hayward for not playing to his capabilities, even though he's hurt. But Rozier deserves blame. Jalen Brown, who's always been my guy who I like, I don't think he deserves as much of the blame, but you put him in as one of the young guys. Who knows what's going on behind the locker room? I give Jason Tatum a ton of blame after he met with Kobe over the summer, worked with Kobe. Now he thinks he is Kobe. He thinks he's one of the superstars. You're not, Tatum. Sorry to tell you, but you're not that good. And anyone who says he's that good, I don't know what you're watching. He had good spurts, and I can see why he could be a talented player. Is he going to be an all-star? Maybe. But if I if you're going to trade someone... I would get Tatum out of here. I have no problem for trading, for trading for a superstar. And this whole Tatum talk from before of how he's untouchable to me was always so ridiculous because I never saw it with this guy. And yes, he's a talented player, but there's plenty of good young guys who can shoot and score. And inflated sense of self. So I put Tatum and Brown and Rozier and the young guys in that list. Then next up, I put Brad Stevens, the head coach. And in terms of putting blame... What percentage of all this is per guy? I don't know. You can figure it out. But Brad Stevens absolutely deserves a ton of blame. And I said it from the very beginning of this season that if he did, Brad Stevens deserves credit and gets all the praise for having an overachieving group, then when there's a massive underachievement like this, especially in a sport like basketball, where I know people say there's a lot of talent, but a, a key with basketball is having a match group, five guys playing well together, managing egos in an ego-driven NBA league. And he didn't do it. He didn't do it from the get-go. And clearly his team had no roles. And we talked about it from the beginning. It was very apparent. And now guys are talking about it. 
Guys like Rozier thought he was better than he was. That he, Clearly, he did not know his role to come off the bench. And guys like Jason Tatum, thinking they're better than they are, don't know their role. Jalen Brown, he's going to get his, and I love Brown, but again, that thinks he's a superstar, taking a ton of shots. I like that Brown takes quicker decisions than Tatum, but again, taking a lot of shots. So I give Morris, Smart, and Horford some credit. Beyond those guys, you combine it with Kyrie and Gordon, the young guys in Rozier, Brown, and Tatum, Brad Stevens for not having the guys play well together and meshing them well together. And finally, to top it all off, I think you got to give a little criticism to Danny Ainge. And he is the blast on my list, so I don't put a ton of criticism on him because his job, his job is to get talent, and that's what they have. But the whole problem all year is they didn't have role guys, and that puts a lot of pressure on Brad Stevens to make that happen. And yeah, you can put all the blame on Brad, you can put all the blame on the young guys, but look at the types of guys they had. And Charles Barkley said in the very beginning, I've said this a million times, that they have too many guys that don't have defined roles. They didn't have enough guys like Aaron Baines or Marcus Smart. They had too many guys that are talented offensive players, but weren't offensively talented enough to make the most of their opportunities. And with this inflated self-ego, with the young guys playing better last year in the playoffs than they really are, giving this inflated to itself, young guys like Tatum and Brown and Rozier who want to elevate their games and be that guy. And then Kyrie's nonsense of being a leader who's a terrible leader and the chemistry issues and saying stuff in the clubhouse, in the locker room to the media guys, and he doesn't trust his teammates and they don't trust him. And this escalates and you get on a losing streak. And then finally things start to come together in the playoffs and they play poorly against the Bucs and the team identity was never set from the beginning. They didn't have to find roles that when they got into a tough situation, as we said, when they needed resiliency, they could not show it. And winning the first game and losing four in a row is so typical of this team for what they showed all season long. And I was very optimistic about the group, and I shouldn't have been. Because if you saw the play all season long, this is what they were. No identity, no team role. And you can divide up the blame as much as you want. I just gave it there in terms of my order. And when I'm looking for this team next season, and we just talked about with Adam Kaufman, do I want Kyrie gone personally, emotionally? Yes, absolutely. The team played better with him out better without him last year. Does that mean they're a better team with him? Without him? Absolutely not. They're better with him when he's playing well. They're better with him when the chemistry is good and guys can coexist. And they're not winning a championship without him if they don't get another superstar. However, what it's like right now, they're not gonna make it anyway. So why would you keep a guy like that who's so miserable to everyone and keep him around? So yeah, if I wanna keep Kyrie Irving simply because I wanna win. And if, the, if we can't get someone else because we need Kyrie, then fine. Then ship the young guys out of here. Something needs to change. Either get rid of Kyrie, sign someone else, keep Kyrie, get rid of the young guys. They talked about it on Felger and Maz. We will learn to forgive. I don't care how annoying you are with the media, how excruciating it is to listen to you on a day-to-day -day basis like it was Kyrie Irving. If you are a guy like David Price, who was killed by Boston media, guys like John Lackey, who people can stand... People actually liked Kyrie Irving last year. So there have been players who have overcome this hatred in the city. Now, the the issue here is if he does end up staying, what well, they do with the rest of the group? But I think he's gone. He may not know, as Adam said. Who knows? But until then, it's going to be an interesting offseason. And hopefully they will not have the same group because this was unbearable to watch from a fan. It was frustrating to watch them on a day-to-day -day basis. And the end of the season was as frustrating a game as I have ever seen. And I'm just there yelling to myself, waiting for the season to end. So let's go Bruins. Looks like they're going to win. Red Sox are playing great. Let's get the parade on the calendar. Get the sick day or the personal day off. Should be one more parade in Boston. Good riddance to the Celtics. Let's go Bees.